Hello everyone. This is Kaku. Oh. You can see a lot of things here in the room now. It's a bit different. But today I'm not here to talk about myself. Today we're gonna talk about you. More specifically, why do your sketches suck? But if you don't like that title, we can do something bad. Here, we can call this the top 10 reasons why you don't think why you are drawing. And number seven may surprise you. I'm just kidding. But seriously, we're going to talk about sketching and more specifically about thinking while you're doing it. Because I think the, the most imp the, the biggest mistake I see people do with sketching is they kind of confuse two things that are different. Uh, sketching and thumbnailing. So people think of sketching as something like this. They want to put out an idea quickly and see if it works. And that's not sketching. That's thumbnailing. Sketching is kind of a process before you finish it an image. You may stop at that process, but it is meant to be something that is to, to be taken forwards. So a sketch is something you need to be accurate about because you're going to use it later. And a lot of times people don't do that. And so let's do a quick thumbnail here and I'm going to show you what a thumbnail should look like. So you get some borders and you don't zoom in too much. Zooming is bad. I'm going to zoom in though. Just, just so you can bloody see this thing. Because if I draw it like this, people complain. People complain a lot in my Twitch stream, which you should check out at twitch.tv slash kqdraws. But that's beside the point. But if you want to com complain at me, that's a good place to do it. I hope to see you there. Okay, anyways, thumbnailing. So, what you should do with a thumbnail is just give it a, a number. I like to give them numbers just so I can reference to them later. And then you draw something. Let's say you have that, that cat OC you, you made in September of 2017. And that cat OC is, is very special to you. Please don't steal her. And so you want to draw her. And for the thumbnail, you're just going to do something quick to see if the idea works. So. You're gonna put in the the features, and then you give like her her anime hair, cause cause that sounded like a good idea at the time. And then I don't know, you just you just make her lean back like this. And and see, you can be you can be very messy when you're doing a thumbnail, cause the point here is just the action. So she's like pointing at herself with her thumb, saying, "Yep, that's me." And so. This would be what I call a thumbnail. And a thumbnail is just a quick sketch to see if something works. So you can try to, to, to block in values. So you're like, yeah, hair is going to be black and it's like here. And uh, that kind of works. And you're like, oh, maybe maybe mouth more like this. So she's more edgy because edgy is, is good, right? So you do that and then you block in some of the blacks here as well. And maybe you want to have this this background like this, but not on her body though. So this background helps show some of her body. So hey, you like that, you don't like that, whatever. So you draw another one and another one and another one. And say, let's, let's do one more just so you get the picture. So you draw something like this for the page. This time I'm doing something more horizontal and maybe she's just like, Let's say she's she's like sitting in the ground and she's got like her legs like this and she's just looking up and she sees I don't know like a bird she, she, she likes birds okay so you draw her looking at the bird and she, she's like trying to catch it and the pull sucks but that's okay this is a sketch you're just trying to to convey the idea to yourself and maybe you can fix it a little bit but generally generally speaking you don't want to spend too much time on these thumbnails so 
like ah, oh, I want it, but but whatever. So that's that's an idea, and you don't like this one. This one sucks. It's not good. So you throw it away. You put it in a bin. Uh, so you're gonna draw thumbnails for everything, and this is the number one tip I can give you. Before you commit to anything, just just throw ideas at a wall. Make something like this. So let me hide this too so you can see better. Make something like this. Throw a bunch of ideas around. These are all different scenes, but generally speaking, you're going to be drawing the same thing unless you're very strange or your idea is very strange and you like landscapes and people at the same time on your scene and you can't quite choose. So you draw them all at the same time, but usually you're going to have the same scene just from different angles. So you try out your, your thumbnails and you pick one you like. And for this, I'm going to be using uh, a process in a picture I have have not yet finished, but I think it, it serves as a good, let's say, example. This one. This is codename Fish Boop. So she's giving the fish the boop, and I like this thumbnail a lot. So I decided to go ahead with it. So this is what we're going to be looking at in a little bit. But... That, that is thumbnail. What we're talking about is not that. We're talking about sketching. And so when you're trying to sketch, you should be careful of one big thing, and that is proportions. So while in the thumbnails, you really don't care about the proportions, on the sketch, it's going to eventually go to the final image. So here, you don't care about the proportions, but here you do. Here, they're important. Because if you get this wrong, eventually you're going to have to fix this. So why not get it right the first fucking time? And that sounds obvious, but a lot of people just keep pushing around, push, push it forwards. Just, just, I'll fix it on the next, next go. When, when I get to painting, I'm going to fix this. No, you won't. <laughs> you're just going to keep co copying the same mistake. And, and that's a problem, and, and that just makes your sketching last so much longer than, than it should. Because you're not trying to finish it. You're, you're always in this weird mindset when you where you want to do something that looks good enough, but you don't want to actually spend the time to get it right or that way. You're kind of like, ah, I, I want to, I just want to go somewhere else now. I'm, I'm tired of this face. And that's not helpful for you, because you think you're saving time, you're actually losing a lot of time. Uh, and more on that in a bit, I'm going to show you an example of what I mean. But, so, for sketching, you want to do something more structured. You want to do something that has a lot of form. You want to make sure everything works. And more importantly, you want to make sure the proportions are correct. If there is one thing, one single thing you need in your sketches is proportion. If the proportions are wrong, the sketch is dead. There's no question. You can't salvage a sketch that has wrong proportions. You can, you can do some juggling with transform, but it tends to not look good. I'll get to that in a little bit as well. So, proportion. Pay attention to what you're doing. So here, what I'm thinking of is this head, right? But more specifically, the neck. And most people just go like, yeah, let's draw the neck here. And you think everyone does that, but a lot of people actually put in a lot of thought. And even if they don't draw any guidelines, they're thinking of them. So you're thinking, hey, so her neck's going to be extended like this, right? It's going to be doing this arc. So that's why her face is tilted a little bit. So what you want to do here is then draw this neck on that arc. And the pitch of her neck is going to be about here. So I'm not going to draw that because I tend to not draw it. But I'm thinking of this point and I'm going to draw my lines towards that. So here. And then you're thinking, yeah. She has this muscle on the back that everybody does. 
And if you don't know that muscle, you should probably study some anatomy, but that's not this video. And then you, you're like, yeah, so her chest is about this size. So you, you compare it to the head and then you realize her head is fucking massive. So you should probably make it a little bit bigger. Does it look good to you? So you look, you zoom out, you do some stuff. And then you realize you're doing all of this wrong. Because you should think about the total before you do your drawing. So here, what's happening is what I like to call the proportions creep. And I did this on purpose. And you can see as I draw her, things tend to, to start to look a little whack. And that is because I'm not planning ahead the pose before I, before I actually get on. But uh, I'm just swinging in it and hoping it gets me somewhere. That's a big problem usually. Unless you're really good, then you shouldn't be watching this video. So one way you could go about that is very simple. Stop starting with head details. You, sh you should start with the general proportions. So here's how I would approach this now. And, um, and you would think I do this every time. No, I actually started doing this very recently. I was, I was on the draw the head first gang for a long time. So what you're trying to do is just get a feel for the pose. And this is called gesture. There are, there are plenty of videos on gesture. You don't need to ask me about it. But, and the gist of it is just that this is a simplified idea of the pose. So you're trying to convey the, the posing of this character with as few lines as possible in a way that it shows the movement you're trying to, you're trying for. So here she's standing, but she has like one leg further behind than the others. So you want to make sure that that shows. So she's, she's like this. All right. And so here we have a pretty good idea of the proportions and guess what? This leg is massive. What can you do? Raise this bloody thing and try again. It's not that difficult because you're not locked into details. And this is important. Don't be afraid to redraw stuff. And more importantly, don't put yourself in a position where you cannot redraw. So what are you going to do? Get this right. And then you realize you go, that's a huge ass neck. What can you do? Pull this over here. We still have not started the drawing. We're just planning out her proportions. And this is what sketching is all about. And this is harder on traditional, but it also teaches you a lot of useful skills. And I do sometimes this on, on traditional. But I, I do that mostly as a hobby. It's not it's not my workflow. It's it's obviously much easier when you're working on digital. And here I'm gonna give her head a bit more shape. So she's leaning her her chest backwards. And here I'm thinking on perspective. Another thing you should you should probably look into. So what I'm thinking about is her her body is tilting backwards. This is called foreshortening. And I'm trying to, to figure out how this will work with her torso, which is just just like this, this simplified shape here. So I'm thinking about these shapes as I do this. So here I'm drawing cross contour lines just to help me figure this out. These cross contour lines are just basically a line that follows the object's contour. That's what it's called, the cross contour line, by the way. And so I'm drawing these lines as much as I can just to, to see things in perspective a little bit better. So here you can see that here you would normally see the top of this thing. And here you would see the bottom, but they are connected by this belly. Just, just call it belly. Nobody cares about anatomy. Anyways. So there's the belly in the middle. And you're trying to, to figure out how she's going to be in perspective. By the way, if you haven't noticed, I, I, I draw furry stuff a lot. 
get used to it. So here she has like the super straight leg supporting the weight of the body. And I can I can change the proportion still. So I'm gonna give her, her hips a little bit of a tilt. So I can just raise this up, lower it a little on the other side. And maybe I can change slightly the chest. Would I be able to do this if I had started from the head? No, I wouldn't. This would be locked in at a much earlier stage when I wasn't prepared for it. So that's a problem, isn't it? So, and then you look at this and you're like, yeah, this sucks. Because <laughs> this needs to be a little bit further now. We are trying to ultimately figure out what could make this picture work. And until you do that, you shouldn't move away from this step. Because what, at least how I, I believe drawing should be approached is, is something like this. Don't do anything you don't understand. Don't, don't draw any, any line, don't make any drawing that has something you don't understand in it. Everything needs a purpose, everything needs a reason. If you don't know the reason, either try to understand the reason behind it or keep it out of your drawing. And that's one way you can become a better artist, I believe, is just by not guessing. The more you guess in your drawing, the more frustrated you're going to be because then you start to have variables you don't understand. And when you don't understand something you're drawing, well, that's, that's a big oof. <laughs> what are you going to do? You're, you're just going to have to guess and try to to make things interesting for you. Like, So you're just looking at this and you're like, oh, I have no idea what's in here, but what if I do it like this? No, that doesn't look good. So let's try it like this. No, that, that looks even worse. No, just keep it like this. I'll, I'll figure it out later. Right. When, when you in this kind of mindset, you're not going to produce a good sketch because the, the first quality of a good sketch is clarity. It, you need to, to look at it. it. It doesn't have to be clarity for everyone, but you as the artist who's doing the sketch ha has to understand very clearly what you have laid down. And for me, a good sketch has form, it has gesture, and it has enough of the surface detail for you to understand what you should do with it. And by surface detail, I just mean either texture, where, well, I suppose not exactly surface detail, that's, that's the wrong term for it, but indications like this, for instance, on the shoulder, breaking the silhouette, I guess is a better word, uh, putting indications of what kind of materials you're trying to, to put into your thing. So for instance, this is a, is a very tight shirt. So I draw it like this, and then there is the fluff here, which shows that not everything else is, is very tight. And this also brings clarity to the material. So uh, you're trying to cram as much information as you can in a useful, useful form. You're not gonna do some shading like this, even though that brings clarity, because you're not gonna use it. And that's an, an important aspect about a sketch. A sketch needs stuff you actually use. You can do you can do a sketch that will be pretty but useless because you can take it forwards. And that's okay because in a way you took it forwards. You, you finished it as a sketch. You, you gave it some shading here and there and that's done. But if you're trying to, to take it to a painting, then you can't do that. You can't do that. You have to, to keep it functional as little as you can but as much information as possible and i like lines for that i think lines are very clean so here i'm, I'm just starting to figure out some of this belly anatomy and let's just do it like this obviously this is a super simplified form but you can understand what i'm going for here right this doesn't feel like this sketch where everything is vague here, everything is defined, even if there's, if it's not pretty yet. 
because we didn't draw the face. So keep that in mind when you're doing your sketches. Try to do something that is visually appealing to you. And that may sound weird considering what I just said about about how do I say it? About that image. English is hard. If you didn't know I'm Brazilian. What I said about finishing the shading is just mm, how do how do I put it? You should be look at, at your sketch and be able to to understand everything that is in there and like it. <laughs> so if you can't understand everything that's in your sketch, then you should work more on it, I think. And a lot of people can disagree with this, and especially super good artists can can go from, from a very rough sketch directly to a finished picture. I am not one of them, and probably neither are you. So spend the time in your sketch, figure things out visually, make your picture good, because in the end of the day, if you start with something mediocre where everything is vague, you're just making one, well, it's much harder for yourself. Everything's vague, you have no idea of what you're gonna do. And second, your picture is gonna be mediocre unless you do the job that the sketch was meant to do while you're painting, and that's that's just making things harder for yourself. You can do that to save time, but you lose uh, you, you make things more difficult, and especially if you're a beginner, avoid this. Take as much time as you need, get every form figured out, and then you're gonna move to painting. Until it's figured out, don't do anything else. So here, I, I tend to end my sketches at somewhat of a rougher finish than it's, it's rougher than most people do line arts, for sure, but it tends to be uh, cleaner than most sketches, at least in, in how, I, how I see it. So, let's think about this. Here I'm doing some of the expression work. And expressions are very important, especially in the sketch stage. If you get this expression and the action right, you get the picture. If one of those is not working out, keep working on it. Hmm. So, should have like this this big old green, because she's about to do some nasty stuff with whatever that thing is. So. Can you see how this would help you paint better? Having the clarity to, to move forwards well. Having the clarity to just... What, what am I doing? Uh, just having a, a very clear idea of everything that's going to be in your picture right away. Can you see how this would make your art faster? And not only faster, more enjoyable. You don't have to guess. You don't have to do some shenanigans and, and keep working on it and, and, and just struggle all the way through and then you end up with something you don't enjoy. If you take your time and you make your sketch good, your final picture is going to be pretty good too. And, and don't get me wrong, this is not a great sketch, but this is a pretty good one for a demonstration. I actually prepared a good sketch I did. And I think it's time to talk about the mermaid. Remember I showed you her earlier? But yeah, this is good, this is good enough for a demo. Um, we may come back to this, I'm not sure. So remember I showed you this, and I said we were gonna talk about this later. Uh, I want to bring attention to something very important, which is a bad habit, at least I see it as one, that a lot of people have, and that is to to always just mm, grab whatever you have. We go right here in this corner, 
pull the opacity down, make a new layer over it, and then like redraw whatever that that is without thinking. That's so stupid. I'm sorry. That's such a bad idea. Because the reason you're redrawing it is because it's not good enough. So why are you drawing over it? Why are you drawing over something that you know doesn't work? Doesn't that sound crazy to you? If you think about it. So if if you really like this technique, and, and I do believe there is some there is some good use for it, especially if you if you have a very solid idea but it's a little rough and you want to clean it up, that can be useful. But if you want to improve the sketch, no, no, don't do it. So guess what? I did it, <laughs> and I did it a lot. I I went through actually four phases of refinement, just just going on top of the thing and then some things didn't quite look right and so I changed them and I changed something here something there and I ended up with this and at first glance you you may think this is pretty good I mean look at those lines they're, they're pretty nice there is this this nice cloth texture over there but then something about this picture doesn't feel right something something about it just 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 doesn't click so so you go back to the sketch and, and you look between them, and kind of like that playful nature of the character is gone. Not only that, the proportions are very different. And there are many mistakes here that from on anatomy that I could point out. Like, hey, look at this chest. The, 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 what, what is hips doing? And sure, she's a mermaid, but like, what is this? That's like such a weird twist. And then you have another big weird curve here and everything is so clumped up and and most of the action is just confusing right and i spent like four hours on this <laughs> i just went ham and and i did it all on the stream and and someone a friend of mine was just like yo take a deep breath look at this thing do you really like it honestly like do, do you <laughs> do you like this drawing? Can, can you? Do, do you like how these hips are looking? And so I did. I actually stopped drawing for a while and I just stared at this bloody thing. And I didn't like it. And up until that point, I wasn't actually thinking while drawing. And that's actually what made me th want to do this video. Because I went back and I erased everything and I went back to this thumbnail and I thought on what I liked about this. And the first thing was obvious. She looks very silly. She looks like she's having fun. She's, she's giddy. She's, she's a dork. So I wanted to emphasize that. And I liked this, this idea where she's just floating around without a care in the water. And I did this. And this looks very different from the original sketch but ultimately it has the same playful nature and this is flips by the way let me do this okay this has the same playful nature and everything here is fairly clear i still have not finished this drawing and i may show it to you and i'll obviously post it on my social media which is something i haven't been doing by the way i should do that more so this made me realize sometimes you need to know when to give up a drawing. You need to know that even though I could have finished this and it wouldn't look horrible, it wouldn't look great and I wouldn't be satisfied with it. And I think that's, that's the main thing. My goal is to become a better artist. My goal is to, to do stuff that I, I am proud of. And that's, the main reason I do art, I I, I just love the thing and I, I want to be really good at it. And so going back and spending a lot more time on a commission ends up making my work worth less because I spend so much more effort, but it's not about the money. It's about doing something great. And that's what I'm trying to do here. 
And so this got a little bit rambly, but those are the main points I think I wanted to pass, which is don't confuse thumbnailing with sketching. Thumbnails are quick drafts of what you want to do. Don't draw over your things unless you are absolutely sure you like every single proportion and that are you just gonna be passing those mistakes forwards. Don't do that. Consider the gesture, consider the form, make your sketch clear. If your sketch is not clear, then you're gonna look at it later on and you're gonna realize that you're not ready. You didn't have enough detail to go over that thing. And here, everything is pretty rough, but I have a pretty good idea of what everything is supposed to be doing, where everything is in space, and that's what I'm looking for in the sketch. So if I know what everything is in space, I can work with this, I can paint this. And maybe it's rough, but I don't care about that. That, that is good enough for me. So focus on what matters in your sketch. Don't shade it, don't put in too many fancy lines, don't do hatching, make it as clear as you can, because you're gonna use this thing later. And the more usable it is, the better. So that's number three. Try to push for something finished. Don't stop uh, at stages. Don't work with stages. You want to get to the finish line. You're not gonna do one layer where you're like this. And so you draw like, this is the head. And then you do another layer on top of this. And you're like, okay, so yeah. So the head's more like this. Yeah, that's good. So you just sketch another layer of refinement on top of this thing. And then you make another layer on top of that. And then you, you actually go ahead and put in more detail. And maybe you even refine it one final step. And that's, that's useless. Why, why are you doing? <laughs> if you're a hapo, get to a point where you're satisfied with it right away. So if you need to, to, to draw the ball and get the angles, draw the ball, get the angles. But then you do that, the eye here. And you like that eye? Okay, good. Then draw another one. Over here, we're, we're working with digital. We, we have this freedom. So you like those eyes, good. So you erase this. And then you do something like this for the cheek. And then you draw in that, that, that little animal nose. And then she's like, hmm, and you like this expression. So you do this and you erase some of this, this thing and you get something that you could, you could fit in a finished picture. It doesn't have to be super detailed, but it's in the right proportion and it's in the right place. That's a big one. That's, I think if anything, that's the biggest one. Try to finish your drawing. <laughs> Try to do the thing you're tr you're trying to accomplish right away. Go for it. Don't be afraid. <laughs> like, what do you, when are you gonna do it? When, when it's finished? Well, it's not gonna get finished if you don't do it. Doesn't make sense, right? So go for the finish. Do all the steps you need, but your goal is to have those final, those finished proportions in the drawing. And know when to quit. I guess that's that's the last one, and that's one I learned very recently. I've done this before, but I've never thought about this, which is know when to give up on a drawing. Know when something is not working. And even if you don't want to give up, like I can't, this this is a job I have to deliver, right? Know when it's time to throw it away and start over. Because even when you start over, you, you've already learned a lot of things. And, and at the very least, you know what not to do, <laughs> right? Uh, but yeah, I think that's all I had to say on this topic. And I will leave you with a little nice view of this fish lady, which I will be finishing and you will see this in my galleries very soon. So, overall, I got a pretty good setup now, uh, at least much better than I 
used to have. And with this, I will be dev devoting most of my Thursdays to do this. Just draw, just record videos, draw things, have fun. And so, will you give me another chance? <laughs> I know I said this a lot and I never follow up, but I've been working on this for a while. So, if you do like what I'm doing here, consider subscribing to the channel right here. And if you want to see me working live and maybe talk to me, ask me some questions, go to my Twitch TV slash QDraws and you're going to find my channel. And I'll leave a link to my Discord on the video description as well. And I created Discord very recently and the, the main purpose is to, for me to talk about my art and just show off because I like what I do. I mean, for, for me to to inform the people who follow my stuff, of course. But seriously, yeah. Uh, I created a channel there called The Art School, and that's mainly a place for you to talk about what you're doing and what you want to improve. And a lot of people there are, are working on Drawbox currently, and that's a very nice place to start if you don't know where to start with drawing. But yeah. Stop making shitty sketches. Bye-bye.